Allison in first. Where will Kale make his move? He comes to the inside. Donnie Allison throws the block. Kale hits him. He slides. Donnie Allison slides. They hit again. They climb into the turn. They're hitting the wall. They're head on the wall. They slide down to the inside. Let's watch those third place cars. They're out of it. Who is going to win it? Coming down. Third place. They're coming around for the finish. Between A.J. Foyt and Richard Petty. Down the back straightaway come the leaders now. Two cars are out. In the back stretch are the leaders. Watching for the leaders to They're still up in turns three and four. The leaders are up in turns three and four. Coming down, Richard Petty is now pulling out in front. Darrell Waltrip is in second. A.J. Boyd is in third. Here they come. Waltrip trying to slingshot. Petty is out in front. his 186th career, and, and there's a fight between Cale Yarborough and Donnie Allison. The tempers overflowing. They're angry. They know they have lost, and what a bitter defeat. Last lap, average speed among these four cars running just inches apart, 198 miles an hour. Harold Kinder extends the white flag, 80,000 people on their feet. Down they go into turn number one. Bonnet has the advantage. Yarborough presses down to the inside. Parsons ready to make his move. Four cars. Who will it be at the finish line? Bonnet holds on the lead. Bonnet Not moving down out of the draft to try and fool their draft, which he's... Earnhardt comes to the inside. It's knuckle to knuckle into turn number three. Earnhardt in front. Bonnet coming back. Here comes Parsons from the inside. The last lap of the 12th annual Talladega 500. What a classic. $249,000 at stake. Here they come to line. Peel bottom. The Alabama gang is in front. Oh, no. Earnhardt pressing. He hits Kelly Arborough. They picked it up to the line. It will be Neil Bonnet. The Alabama gang pulls it off. came off 
looks like a bumper came away. It certainly does. An entire bumper pulled off. There's number 66, Lake Speed from Mississippi. His car battered in the back end. The average speed, until the caution, was 192 miles per hour. They're coming back to the line. They're coming very slowly up through turn number four. Number 23, Jeff Bodine has come in and here. But only some people seem to be racing. Here's Richard Brooks coming down the line. Here's one car trying to get in front of him. Oh! trying to make up a lap. I think he was trying That's to make exactly up a lap. That's exactly what it was. Yep. Darrell Waltrip was trying to make up a lap. And so was Lake Speed in the number one car. Lake Speed was the one who set all that off. Cale Yarbrough and the other three guys had decided to settle for their positions as they came round to the flag. But the heroes running a lap down had decided to make it back. This is it for $50,000. They scream through the tri-oval. They head down that 1,800 foot straightaway. Back on that 31 degree banking another time. There's Bodine coming down on the inside. That's going to hurt Kale's chances, but Kale's able to pull away as they come off a of turn two. Now he'll try to make his shot down the backstretch, but Bonnie's going to be trying to do the same thing. Who will prevail? Has Baker tried to save anything? Here's Bonnet coming to the inside. Three wide behind them. Bonnet going to the inside. Cale Yarborough comes through. Baker falls to third. Baker was a sitting duck. No question about it. He knew it. There was nothing he could do about it other than to try to draft back past him. All right. Keep your eye on number 28, Cale Yarborough, who is qualified for Daytona 500 at 201 miles an hour. He's got one shot left. Here they come to the line. Yarborough on the inside. Bonnet throws the block. Give it to Bonnet. Two years in a row the clash the first driver to ever do so first to driver to win two classes last lap to set down baker and bill elliott came home in second place this is it the last lap of the great american race wild trip still deployed first yarborough in second yarborough edges to the outside back straight away final time down to the inside the move he loves here he comes up to the inside it is Cale Yarborough taking first as they get into turn number three coming for four down to the inside here comes Earnhardt Cale Earnhardt. Earnhardt trying for second Bonnet trying to find a place to run they're coming to the finish line at the line it is Cale Yarborough he's done it again trying to get Sarah Labonte to get out of the lead, but with all that jockeying going on behind him, he still might be in the best place as they come around for the white flag. One lap to go. As this tremendous group of cars thunders into turn number one, Terry Labonte in front, Earnhardt is there in second, then in third, it's Buddy Baker on the outside, Bobby Allison is in fourth, Harry Gant is on the inside in fifth, at 200 miles an hour, all of these cars contesting for the lead, Earnhardt closes ground, he's going to try the high side, Earnhardt going to turn three at 200 miles an hour, winds it up, fires it in there, and it's Earnhardt going in front, Baker to second, Labonte back to third, it is still Allison in fourth, and now on the inside, Terry Labonte begins to move. Labonte back to second as they switch positions and shuffle down out of the turn. Dale right Earnhardt. for Earnhardt. They're racing for second back there. Open the door for Earnhardt. As they come out of the tri-oval, headed for the line. The question will be who will be second. The checkered flag belongs today to the Richard Childress crew. Dale Earnhardt has done it again. The first man to ever win it two years in a row. Dale Earnhardt's crowd on pit road ecstatic. Beep, beep. Oh, my. I know what I want. I want to see a replay on that. Do we have another angle? Let's take a look at, at Ned Jarrett being overwhelmed. This wouldn't happen. And you know, you were cheating, Jerry. I think that's about 60 miles an hour. I was going that. over 60 miles an hour, but it looks like I'm stopped, and here he comes. Road hog. Say goodnight, Ned. <laughs> There's, nobody's got anything coming right now. Oh, they get sideways. He hit him coming off, and he hit him going in. He used up all of his bumper that time, and I thought that perhaps Earnhardt came off a little early on the on the uh, gas that time, which is a good way of trying to break the line of the fellow behind you. It's just a... Here's... Waldrop keeps him straight, but he keeps Earnhardt. not happy. Now oh, Waldrop on the inside. Side. side by side. Down to the inside. Oh! oh Four cars. There oh, it goes. There's Bo Nine into the fence. Joe Rutman spins around. Who 
who's going to win the race? Where's Kyle Petty? Kyle Petty is slowed down. He's going slow. Caution is Kyle out. Petty's going to win 397. the race. I think Kyle's going to take it home. Joe Ruppin gets going again. I think he's going to run second. Car number three comes around. All beaten up. Wild finish here at Richmond. Earnhardt's got his car going again, but Kyle Petty has passed him while he was sitting over there. Joe Rutman has passed him. Joe Rutman is all beaten up. Look at the back of Rutman's car. In replay, let's look at what happened. There are now two laps to go. Darrell Walton's alongside of him. There's the hook. Bang. Earnhardt came down, caught the right rear of Darrell's car. And both of them spin. Darrell hits the car hard. Joe Rutman can't control the car if he could just keep them spinning. Look at Neil Bonnet's car. Look at Bonnet's car coming down the front. Neil Bonnet's oh, coming that's by. Walter. That's Walter. Waltrip's car with nothing left is coming down by us now. We'll take a look at it. There's Bo Nine and the coming into the crash. Checkered flag is about to come out. Checkered flag will come down, and I think Kyle Petty is going to win it for the Wood Brothers. Caution is on the racetrack. Take a look at number 11. There's number 7 that came through that calamity up here on the last lap. Coming down, Harold Kinder, flag in hand, and Kyle Petty, who watched it all. Checkered flag is coming out, I believe, right now. They're only showing 398 complete, but I believe that's 400. The checkers are down. Kyle Petty has won it, and we want to look again at it. trying to duplicate it. Can he stay there? Or is Davy Allison drafting with him and pulling alongside? Looks like he's slowing down. Yes, it does. Now, if he could have stayed on... Oh, he is he's out of fuel, I believe. He's, out of he's juggling it. He's at the worst place he can be. He's running out of fuel. He is losing the 500 right here. Bodine gambled. Got snake eyes. Two laps to go. Elliott. That's... Bodine with her fingers. Final lap. Last sprint out of turn number four. The pride of Georgia, Bill Elliott, straining car number nine to bring it home and give Ford and give the folks from Georgia something to cheer about. He comes across the line to win it by about ten car lengths. Bill Elliott, two-time winner of the great American race. Second place with a great performance, Benny Parsons, and third to the king, Richard Petty. An old man at 35. They're trying to age him a little right here as the white flag comes out. Down to the strike, dropping all the way below the line. Earnhardt getting really fancy as he tries to break the draft, and Allison moves in. Davy Allison definitely closed the ground. Are working so well on the low side of the racetrack in turns one and two will let him pick up a little bit of an advantage. It might be enough to hold off Allison's advantage in three or four, but we'll see. Here they come. Last lap to decide it all. Earnhardt, the defending Winston Cup champion, trying to hold off Davey Allison. Allison is making his move. He closes. He pulls up. He's pulling alongside. Davey Allison 
on the high side. Earnhardt on the bottom. Here they come to the line. Allison trying to drop low as they come to the line. It will be by four or five car lengths. Car number three. He gave him a thrill. Earnhardt has done it. Joey Knuckles and his team will have to wait another day here in Michigan. Cecil Gordon, the static, Lula Rosa, Kurt Shelverdine. Boy, for all of those guys, this is some moment. Third, Texas Terry Labonte is in fourth. Neil Bonnet, the third member of that Alabama gang, back in fifth. And those two leaders draw away a bit. Davey Allison coming after his father. Looks down inside as they take it high in turn number two. Back straight away, final time to decide it all here this afternoon. Now, uh, Davey, what are you going to do? He's got less than half a lap to do. And they have a net lead, and I believe this is going to be a battle between the father and son. I don't think anybody Davey. else can try it, but here he comes. He's going to do the it. bottom. He's down low. Bobby Allison high. Davey Allison find the inside move. Bobby Allison holds him off. They come to the stripe. And the winner of the 30th annual Great American Race, Bobby Allison, Davey Allison, his son in second, Judy Allison is static. What a tremendous family performance. Look at him, David, Bobby waving to Davey. <laughs> Did you hear Davey say I yep. made a try for him at turn four, but he was too strong. Well, those fans are David Hall. White flag, one lap to go. Talladega 500. Always dramatic, always excited at the finish. Here oh. comes Sterling Marlin on the outside. Well, what a move. Now, can he make it stick? Sterling Marlin hanging on, and he's with Schrader. Now, Marlin dives to the inside. Can't quite do that. Oh, three gets front. sideways for just a moment. And Schrader moving up on the outside. A very smart, fast move. Oh. By 44 is boxed, and he had to slam it to the inside. This will double them all back up again. Schrader has the advantage. Rick Wilson goes to second. He won't give ground. It's a break for Ken Schrader. Earnhardt on the bottom, and as they run side by side, Schrader gets a little distance. Coming down for the finish of the 20th annual. Talladega 500. Missouri's Ken Schrader in front. Coming back down turn four comes Earnhardt Wilson on the outside he wants to take one more shot here they come all battling for the lead Bodine comes back up the middle at the line Schrader checkered flag is out incredible win for Ken Schrader in the Harry Hyde car what a move that he made on to save every bit of fuel he possibly can in the last lap the interval is immense. It's a question of fuel. Can Waltrip hold out? He can coast in now, I think. Yeah, he's about close enough now that he could coast across the start finish line and still win. Out of turn four, after 17 years of effort, the Daytona 500 belongs to Franklin, Tennessee's Darrell Waltrip. He's done it. He's done it. Second place at stake to the line. Number 25. Schrader will take second. Seven seconds back, almost eight. And right behind him comes Dale Earnhardt. Do you believe it? What an incredible finish. Fifth in the scheme of things, and here it is running second to the Daytona 500. Maybe winning it. The white flag coming down to Dale Earnhardt. One lap to go. Does anybody have anything left to cope? with the man in black. Here's what's going to happen, maybe. I thought Terry Labonte was going to try to move down and take over second place, and if he does, that'll just open it up for Earnhardt to move away. We'll see. Uh, naturally, every one of them wants to gain a position, whether it's uh, for from fourth to third or whatever, but if, if they do get side by side, it'll help Earnhardt. This is the half a lap to go. Four-car shootout to decide it all. Dale Earnhardt. Here comes Duke Coke down on the inside. Oh, Earnhardt has Earnhardt problems. Earnhardt slopping back. Something is amiss. Here comes the field driving for the finish. And on the outside, it is car number 10, Derek Cope. Something amiss on the Earnhardt car. Coming to the line. It's Labonte pulling up. And an amazing finish. The Whitcomb Racing Team has won it. Unbelievable. Earnhardt had a tire go down maybe as he went into the turn. And Nicole crying a little bit.
Bert Cope's first top five finish, his first victory. Rusty Wallace out back, the men to watch. Number four, the yellow car. Ernie Irvin and the man in black, Dale Earnhardt. And look at him trying to find a hole down on the inside. He does. He makes it three wide and just sort of roots Kenny Schrader out of the way. Dale Earnhardt already on the move. Looking for another spot out of the back. There he ran up on a wall, nowhere to go. Bill Elliott down on the inside. They're going to split Mark Martin down the back stretch. Martin has no, no control over what they're doing. He just sits there with the throttle wide open. Bodine trying to pull away. Remember, he spun three times coming out of four, changed his tires. Here's Earnhardt on the run, and Ernie Urban gets shut out. A wall in front of him. Walked in totally. I'm surprised that Jeff Bodine has not been able to move away. He ran very fast in that first half, but he can't get away from Greg Sachs, so the field stays completely bunched up as long as those front two cars are running side by side. But here comes Earnhardt down on the inside. Finds a hole and takes out another complete row there, Nan. Yeah. I tell you, that car is strong. Look at there. Another right down row. on the apron that time. Pulls up for Trickle in the 66 and Wallace. Here he comes, trying to bust through. Dale Earnhardt on a roll in the back straightaway. You could have got all kind of bets in the garage area. That A car could not have been able to do that on his own. But Dale Earnhardt, look at him. He's going for the lead. And has it. In two laps, Earnhardt thrusts himself right through the field, bottom of the racetrack. Less what a statement right. about next week's 500. That is for fifth position. Here are the front four. Last lap is underway. Earnhardt looking for his 51st win. His 29th Super Speedway win. Can he stay there? Here's Elliott in the nine. Chevy in front. Ford in second. Ford in third. Chevrolet in fourth. At 195 miles an hour, they approach the third and fourth turn for the final time. Dale Earnhardt just shovels it in, turns it sideways, feels that car just begin to lift under him a little, and he pulls away by a car length. Here come the boards, closing on the outside. Mark Martin now trying to help Bill Elliott. As they close, here they come for the tryover. The final few moments of the race. Here's Elliott coming up to the high side. He's not going to make it. He comes to the inside. He's pulled a throw to the inside that did not work. It was too late. Dale Earnhardt has done it again. Wow, what a race. He's as good as you say he is. I mean, he is just spectacular. Earnhardt had it figured. And spoiler. White flag is down. This is it in the first one. Dandy race. I think that is the key. What is the four car going to do in the middle of this? He might determine what the outcome of this race. Here comes Martin fading high to the outside in turn number two. That onboard camera in a wide shot. He pulls up alongside. Lap car is there down on the bottom. Scooting through comes Earnhardt. Martin works all the way to the top. Okay, which one is Ernie Irvin going to help? He'll help the Chevrolet of Dale Earnhardt and hope that it'll suck him on by Mark Martin and he'll pick up a second, or maybe he thinks coming off of turn three, he can make it three wide, but Earnhardt's going to take the low side of the racetrack. Here they come. Here comes number six, Martin, still staying on the outside, driving for the finish. Earnhardt comes back to win it. And Ernie Irvin helped him to win that race. When he got up behind Earnhardt, got the ramp just right and shot him right on out in front of Mark Martin. Don't ever think the fact that Earnhardt involved in Winston Cup racing. I bet you there was some radio conversation going on there. As we finish the first 125-mile qualifier, Dale Earnhardt becomes the third driver in Daytona 500 history to win the one hour just moments ago. And they're about to make it three wide off the banking. Ernie Irvin down on the inside of number four. Storms into the lead in the back straightaway. Ernie Irvin out of Modesto, Ooh. California. Hits. He's into Elliott. They're sliding, trying to correct, pick them up. Into the wall goes Sterling Marlin, and the leaders are all in trouble here. Richard Petty's car getting hit. A serious crash in the back straightaway. Petty is in it. Darrell Waltrip is involved. Dale Earnhardt is involved. This is what happens when you get all the cars running close together again. And look at number two. Bad moment here for Rusty Wallace. Caution is out. Strongest guy in that bunch. Looks like he's a chance to run on Earnhardt. And there he goes to the inside. Final lap. Kyle drops to the bottom. Urban goes up on top. Kyle pushes it hard. I guarantee Urban's going to go three wide to the bottom with Jared. There's that bottom lane open for him. All right. 
think this is the run for the money. Last lap. Urban there on the inside. Earnhardt on the outside. Kyle looks him over. Who's going to help them? Is it the, which one does Kyle Petty get behind? Whoever he gets behind has got a shot to win this race. And there comes a six. He's going to enter into it. Mark Martin with a good, solid run. He might be able to dip under both of them. All three of them come up that About five seconds to pay dirt. Here they come. Urban on the inside. The shortcut on the inside is going to be of some help. As they come to the line, dead even. I don't know. I think it's like the three. I think Earnhardt won the race. It's off the close. Or does this tell Digger that we do this every time we <laughs> race up here? Isn't that something? Unbelievable to run the kind of race that's been here today and finish it with a few inches. Give it to Earnhardt. Dale Earnhardt has done it again. At Talladega, the Dega Dominator pulls it off, and the 22 comes across out of gas. Here comes another car out of gas. Jeff Purvis to the line, running out of fuel. Look at this finish. Look at the four wide on the back, right behind them. Scattered all the way across, trying to get a position there. And so Dale Earnhardt has done it again, the four-time winner of Talladega. The Dega Dominator wins it for a fifth here this afternoon. And so the 1993 Die Hard 500 at Talladega Super Speedway is over. But the memories here of Davy Allison will live on. The always eloquent Darrell Waltrip. Equally eloquent in his silence has been Dale Earnhardt. Earnhardt has said, I am not ready to share my feelings with anyone about Neil Bonnet. The safest place for me to be right now is in my race car on that racetrack. But for us who have followed winners from its inception, we can share some moments with Dale and Neil from that very first episode and some other moments from winners. Neil Bonnet was a great host of winners. He was equally great as a TV analyst, as your sidekick in the booth. He had an innate sense about what people needed to know and he could communicate it so not just race fans, but so everyone could enjoy it. He was a tremendous ambassador for the sport. For my nickel, he was the best analyst in the history of the game. Looked like for a moment he's going to help uh, Ernie, but now he gets there. Now he wants to take the lead. Now he might be in a position to do it. Three wide in the back straightaway. Ooh, they're close together, but Jeff Gordon makes the pass. Good move. Here comes Brett Bodine. He'll follow Gordon, keep the second. Shocker here. Gordon going into first, Brett Bodine to second. And relegated back to third, and Earnhardt's car looks yeah, squarely yeah, going into three that time. Getting mixed up in the in the air that comes off of the cars there just in that particular part of the racetrack. White flag is out. They touch at 190 miles per hour. Jeff Gordon, no rookie anymore. Stays out in front. Brett Bodine in second. Earnhardt doing a masterful job of picking that car up in control. Remember, they're floating like feathers at 190 miles an hour around this racetrack. But Ernie, uh, again, Dale Earnhardt has to be wondering if he made his move a little bit too early. Back Here he comes back one more time. Moves to the inside. Look down there for Red Bodine and said, no, that's my spot. Oh, Earnhardt is very loose. Goes high on the racetrack. He gathers it back in. That cost him no chance to catch up with them now as they come for the checkered flag. Down the stretch for the final time. Jeff Gordon in front. Brett Bodine's going to make a shot. Short. Jeff Gordon. Jeff Gordon and the Rick Hendrick Chevrolet has defeated Ernie Irvin, has defeated Mark Martin and Earnhardt. Two laps remaining. Youngest winners over the years, Bonnie Thomas of 20. Talk about the great Fireball Robert won his first race in 19, or when he was 21. It was 30 years ago, the Fireball lost his life in this race. Bobby Hillen was 22. Man, I had to be in there somewhere when I was oh, that person. <laughs> they don't remember back that yeah. far. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> White flag. White flag. One to go. Coming around the Daytona 500 winner, Sterling Marlin. Looking up Jimmy Spencer just in front of him. Boy, this is the moment. I don't know. Set on the pole at 181.439. He will become only the fifth driver in 35 years to win the Coca-Cola.
Coleman, 600 at Charlotte, North Carolina from the pole. Checkers are out, and they are down, and it is Jeff Gordon victorious this evening on this Memorial Weekend at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. <laughs> Not, you're they, in good company. They, they, did, they did the right thing there. I wouldn't have took a chance on it, but they did. Earnhardt up to yeah. congratulate him. They shaking his fist, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Nice deal. Yep. Martin third. Must see how, see how he catches him there. He can really get that momentum up off of there. Yep. And then it cures you all the way down the back stretch. And the next time around, when he gets to that position, that's, he, that's when he'll make the move. That's when he's got to do it. Richard. Yep. Well, there you've heard the prediction, folks. Dale Jarrett's back there in fifth. Terry Labonte, sixth. Michael Waltrip to seventh. Steve Grissom, what a great ride for eighth. Schrader in ninth. Morgan Shepard in tenth. Leading rookie in the race. Yeah, the sixth. Name's Ricky Craven. White flag is coming down. The sixth car is not close enough to really make those back. Craven, the leading rookie, up in 14. This is it. 21 cars in the lead lap, and this is the final one. Draws away by about three car lengths. Caught it to two. Here comes Earnhardt. The Intimidator will have him. to be at his intimidating best. He's got him a running start, but it ain't going to be Ooh, good enough. I don't think it is either. He couldn't get the momentum that he needed. Closes in, coming to three. Sterling Marlin stays in front. Earnhardt nipping away at him here. Perched in second place. Trying to lurch out there. Launch one final assault out of turn four. Down they come, the short 1,600 foot straight away to the finish line. And the winner of the 1995 Daytona 500 is again Sterling Marlin. Morgan McClure, ninth career win, and three of them have been here at Daytona. What does Earnhardt <laughs> have to do to win this race? Stand ready. He's being put under the gun. Here comes Wallace thundering to the inside. Then through turn three, Rusty Wallace moves up on John Andretti, puts him back to fourth. Dale Jarrett closing in there. Here's that battle for the lead. Down to it, last lap. In the Irish Hills of Michigan, there's a four-leaf clover for somebody today. 13 in the lead lap as we get down to the finish of this one. Gordon in a rush to the outside. Labonte holding him off. As they get down into turn three where you pinch him just a little step off. Here's Gordon coming to the inside. Does he have enough? Yeah, he's going to make it this day. Nope. Labonte's going to do it. Yeah. And Dale Jarrett looks like he's blown coming off the turn four. And past the line. Yeah. The 27th annual Michigan 400. Belongs to Bobby Labonte. Fantastic victory for this young man, brother of Terry Labonte. Someone said, you know, what do you want to do in your life? He said, well, I'd like to be more like my brother Terry, the 1984 <laughs> national champion. He gets stronger with every race, six in points coming into today. There's your winner. Make a move. The surprise car right now sitting there at six spot. Look at Jeff Bodine come into this. This is not over by a long shot. Moments are running out. This is it final lap in this five lap shootout you have Gordon in front wheeling off out of turn two looking to the inside Jerry Mark Martin right there nobody's made a move yet they're all single file down the back straightaway maybe they can't make a move maybe they don't have enough horsepower Gordon has him covered. Uh-uh. Here comes Martin peeking on the inside. Well, Ernie, Ernie took a peek on the inside, but he couldn't quite do anything with him. Now's the time. He's going to have to move now if he's going to make a pass. The Chevy of uh, Jeff Gordon stays first. Dale Jarrett right there in second. As they come back around, Checker's about to fall. And you're going to watch this finish at the line. It's Gordon. Jeff Gordon's won it. Checkers coming out. First time winner, Ken. First time that Jeff Gordon has won at Talladega. He defeats Dale Jarrett, Mark Martin, Ernie Irvin, Jimmy Spencer, 2-3-4-5 on this rundown at the end.
of one of the most amazing, spectacular diehard 500s we've ever seen. No victory. White flag is out and one to go. All right, now here's where it starts nail biting now. You ask that question, what do I do? Well, here we go. We'll find out. <laughs> Nemechek to the inside. That's where we're going to go. Nemechek for second spot. Closing up on Sachs. He's got second. Now, if the door is smart, he'll push him along here, and they'll work on... Now, look at Sachs. Sachs. He's driving. Yeah, his... yeah, he's driving. His... Making a move on the inside of Earnhardt. Oh, Jared's loose. Down the back straightaway. Big trouble. Earnhardt out. Up and over number three. And for the 19th time, Lady Luck deals a bad hand to Earnhardt. And Awaiting Dale Earnhardt is the man who brought the Daytona 500 to CBS, Ken Squire. The 20 year quest is over. Gates have just opened for Dale Earnhardt in victory lane at Daytona. Here's his wife, Teresa, coming to speak to him. One for Dale Earnhardt, perhaps one for Neil Bonnet as well. About to ratchet himself out of this beautifully prepared car. He said patience was what it was going to take, and patience is what he gave it. All right, getting on the hat. He's waiting on this. And he's ready to clamber out, ready to step out of car number three, the winner of the Daytona 500. Oh, going to have a drink of soda here. It's been a long time before refreshment here. All right, here he comes, out of his car, and listen to this. Two decades he's waited for this moment, and it's here, and everybody gets a bath. Dale. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. What a show. Yes. Here with Larry McReynolds and a big hug. And Richard Childress. Dale, how about that ride? How about it? Man, can you, can you believe it? For one, got an awesome race car, but for two, thank good Lord. For a good day, this race car did everything. The good Lord looked after it all day long. Good wrench. This is for all them race fans and all them people have been saying, Dale, this is your year. Dale, this is your year. And boy, a lot of them said it this year. All the way from Mr. France, all the way down to... Todd Parrott and all the guys on the team, the Daytona 500 is ours. We've won it, we've won it, we've won it. And everybody took a shot at you at the end. Uh, I don't care who's taking shots at me. I was driving driving the mirror more than it was the front. But, uh, you know, I tell you, these great sponsors, these great people that's worked with us and give us everything we need to win with. This is a good race car. The Spinny Clinton. Hey, David, congratulations on your baby. And, and uh... Larry McReynolds, Spindy Clinton, Richard Childers, we got one heck of a race team. We're going to win a championship this year. One for Dale and one for Teresa, one for Neil Bonnet, two today. Well, one for a lot of people, T. Wayne Robinson and, uh, uh, you know, old Neil Bonnet, my dad, everybody that's been in racing has been my friend that taught me, taught me so much, that touched my life. You, there's so many of them, I can't thank them all. My mom, thank you, Mom. I know she's back home. Dale Jr., hope you're not too sore. Carrie and Kelly, I love you all. Uh, you've touched a lot of people here today, and we'll be back for the trophy presentation in a moment after these messages. Just once, just once, I wish you guys would tell us the real story. Shit. And after 22 seasons, CBS bids a final goodbye from Daytona. Thank you for having been a part of it with us. And thanks to everyone at the Daytona International Speedway and NASCAR.
who over the years always made it a joy to come to the birthplace of speed for the Pepsi 400 and for the great American race, the Daytona 500 each February. To everyone in the Daytona future, have a good ride. For years, we who have been fans and followers have wanted one thing for the sport, respect. And over the past few years, we've attained a lot more of just that, the sense of being included in a real part of the American sports spectrum. And for years, we've wanted these drivers to get the financial respect that we believe they deserve for their commitment to this very dangerous and very difficult game. 2001 is going to be a pivotal year in Winston Cup racing and its history. New tracks will bring the speed, the spectacle, and the heroes to new facilities and major population areas. And this new TV contract will provide the Winston Cup drivers with the dollars they deserve. And the television promise is to bring new technology and new excitement. You know, I love 1969 and 70 when the pioneer effort was with the Motor Racing Network in bringing radio broadcasting to a new level. It was exciting then. It was thrilling in the year 1979 with that first flag-to-flag -flag broadcast of the Daytona 500, which many say changed the way America perceived this sport and its heroes. And I think it's going to be just as exciting next year to see what's on the horizon for the great American game, stock car racing. Thank you so much for being part of it with us. Hello, everyone. I'm Ken Squire. And as the engines have fired here at New Hampshire, I remind you that this is the final NASCAR broadcast for Turner Sports. I was the play-by-play -play announcer for TVS for 18 years, beginning in the very first year of NASCAR coverage, 1983. It's been a real honor to be a part of today's broadcast and I wish my colleagues the very best today on TNT as this amazing 32-year run comes to a close. I hope you enjoy today's race.